My name is Ariel and I am a recovering heroin addict. Growing up, the type of stuff I would be involved in was more uh, on the creative aspect. I would paint, draw, you know, I played guitar, but it was more stuff where I'd isolate and be by myself. So around 12 years old I started smoking marijuana and uh, that progressed. I started experimenting with uh, cocaine. But that wasn't really the kind of thing that made me feel good, like that over anxiety and just really being up. I just, I felt very uncomfortable, but I would still do it, you know, just something to make me get out of myself and not have to stay in my own head. I got introduced to downers, you know, opiates, uh, specifically pills, you know, like Norcos, uh, Oxycontin, Morphine, and I would balance it with each other. You know, if I was going to go and drink and smoke crack or snort cocaine, I would do that, but I'd always make sure I had my little pills with me to balance it out so I wasn't feeling like I was, you know, basically going out of my mind. Whatever I could find to get me away from myself, that's, you know, that was my goal pretty much every single day that I was using. I just remember I was getting to the point where I was using these pills and it wasn't really affecting me anymore, you know. That's, I felt the best when I was high on opiates. I was introduced by an old friend to heroin. And the first time I did it, I snorted a little bit and I just, I immediately remember falling in love with it. It was like I could just snort the smallest amount and it would equal to taking like 20 Norcos. And that's, you know, that was like, I was like, oh, finally I found what was made for me. I only snorted it that time and then I quickly switched right over to IV using. And it was like, though everything around me just melted away. And I just, I finally, I thought I finally found that that feeling of peace, you know, finally being where I'm supposed to be and not worrying or caring about what anyone else has to say or think or any judgments that were, I believe, being placed on myself. It became more prevalent and more available when I was going to school out in Chicago. And it was just, it was so easy. You just go up to someone, tell someone what you're looking for, and they point you in the direction. And then coming back out here to Lake County in the suburbs, thinking it would be more difficult, but it was just as easy, if not easier. It's almost the same mentality as it was in Chicago. You know, go to certain areas, and there's people just standing around. Quickly, within two, three months after my first initial use, which was at the age of 15, it became uh, every day. I'd get sick and I'd wake up, you know, from... Uh, withdrawing from the heroin. And I'd have to figure out a way to get money. So I'd figure that out if it had to be um, selling stuff I have, taking stuff from other people. You know, at that point in my life, I really, you know, I didn't care. The only main focus was to get and use drugs. It, at the point I was at, it was maintenance. It wasn't getting high anymore. It was just, I have to do this so I can go through my day normally. And so, you know, and then I do that, and then I'm already plotting and thinking, well, how am I going to get high tomorrow? I could just see now how much I was tearing my parents apart, but when I was using, it was just, I was like, what's wrong with you? Like, why does this bother you so much? It's me. It's my body. I can, you know, do what I want to. I'm still alive. I'm still breathing. I remember one day my dad was driving me down to uh, a treatment center in Chicago, and he just started breaking down and crying. It's a rare thing to see my father cry. And he was expressing to me how he had to take out a life insurance policy on me. And I was 19 at that time. And that he just, he really wasn't sure anymore, like, if I was going to ever come back home, if I was going to be alive. That was, like, the first time I think it really took a toll on me. And I, like, I, I understood, you know, well, you know, what I'm doing isn't normal. What I'm doing isn't just affecting myself, but it's affecting everyone around me. I knew I had a problem. I just, at that time when I was younger, around 18, 19, I thought I wanted help. I thought I wanted to stop, but 
I wasn't 100% committed to stopping. And I relapsed on it multiple times over and over and over again. And the first day I hung out with someone from, you know, my old lifestyle, I used that exact day. You know, it was just, it picked up right where it left off and it was just starting everything all over again. It was just a big slap in the face to myself. But the main cause to all my relapses is that I wasn't utilizing the tools that I do have. I wasn't using my support network. I wasn't being completely honest in my program. I wasn't sharing what I needed to share, you know, talking about my feelings, talking about my thoughts. My using and getting high was merely but a symptom of the real issue for me. And I wasn't addressing anything else. I was just solely addressing the drug and alcohol issue. Heroin withdrawal was probably one of the most excruciating things I've ever been through. Sitting and thinking about it now at a sober point, it was, you know, it is very physical withdrawal, but it is mental as well. I've been putting drugs in my body that have been numbing me to pain, to feelings, you know, I've just, I've been cut off completely from emotion and anything else that now I'm not on these drugs and now I'm feeling everything and dealing with everything and it's just, it's so overwhelming and that's the scariest part of withdrawal for me is the, the knowing that I have to deal with this, the knowing that I'm going to have to face this pain, face these feelings, face these people and not have my crutch to go back to. It was something that on my own dealing with, I just I wasn't capable of doing it. I needed the help of other people. Growing up, I've experienced just a lot of traumatic events, rapes, um, domestic violence, and I never shared about it. I had a lot of self-esteem issues. You know, I had to be a certain way all the time, or I was pathetic, or I just I didn't deserve anything. So I beat myself up so much. Today, with the help of a doctor, a counselor, a recovery coach, you know, I maintain and manage my, uh, my mental health and my emotional health. You know, I, if I'm going through something, I know right away to talk about it. That's the biggest saving grace in my life is the uh, ability to talk and to have that forgiveness for myself and for others. I go to meetings every single day. I talk to my sponsor, you know, as much as I possibly can. I don't talk to those people that I used to have in my life before. I, I surround myself in an environment that I know is safe. Heroin is not a very taboo thing anymore. It is, unfortunately, the norm almost. And it's everywhere, unfortunately. I've met people in my addiction that were using heroin at age, ages of 13, you know, all the way up to, you know, ages of 80. There's, there's no label on heroin at all. I never actually knew how destructive it can be throughout my life. I wish someone would have showed me what I went through while I was using before I ever used. Showed me the the pain I was going to cause myself. The main thing I think is like we need to address these emotional issues that we're going through. Heroin use is a means to escape from something. Uh, we need to find out what we're trying to escape from because that's the only way we're going to be able to, I really think, stop the use of drugs is when we are in a society where we can be accepting of ourselves and other people without you know, judgments and limitations and labels. Sometimes people just need to be told every single day that, you know, you are worthy. You are beautiful. You know, you're perfect the way you are. You know, there doesn't need to be anything extra attached to it.